Okay, next up we're going to be doing the uh, island or the pocket with the islands machining. So for this exercise we're going to set up very similar to how we set up the first uh, operation uh, that we've done. But this time we're going to include the pockets and I'll show you how to do that. So come over here under operations, right click on that, add milling operation and let's go to pocket. Okay, make sure your second coordinate system is selected. It's going to be defaultly selected from now on because you started using it right here. So as you can see, everything in the first operation is under the first coordinate system. Everything under the second operation under the second coordinate system. Okay, that's the first setup and this is the second setup. Come over here under new. And let's come down over here until you see multi-chain and click on add. Now, all you have to do is click on this surface right here, the bottom of the pocket, and you're going to see it create three chains, one chain, two chain, three chains. So one around the entire area and then two around the pockets. So if you click on OK, you're going to see three chains created. OK, make sure you have three chains selected and then click on OK. And let's go to tool. Now, uh, very quickly, I want to show you, uh, I want to go over something real quick. I'm going to move this to the side. The distance between here and here is actually a little bit uh, less than a quarter inch. So we need to use a tool that is less than a quarter inch. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to select. Okay, and I'm going to select an end mill. Now, I customly made it 0.2 on purpose. I did not want to use a, a 1 8 um, end mill because it's going to take too long to machine. So I use that as 0.2 and then select. Let's go to levels and let's choose the upper level which is going to be the top of the pocket and then the lower level which is going to be the bottom of the pocket. Okay and then we can use the step down as 0.1. Let's go to technology over here and let's uh, add in offsets for the wall. So let's leave about 5 thou in the wall to finish. 5 thou on the islands, around the islands to finish that. Remember, always look at the graph over here that indicates what you're typing in. And then 5 thou over here under the floor. I'm going to also check wall and floor. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here under link. Under ramping, I want to select helical ramping and then click on data. Okay, now the option for is right here and you're going to see it's going to show you the entire um, toolpath that's already located over here. Now I want to show my radius, I want to make my radius really small. So I want to make my radius about 5,000. Okay, change that and then click on OK. For the lead in and lead out, let's pick on arc and I'm going to change my radius over here to also 0.05. Okay, so I'm choosing this radius because it, you know, minimize the, uh, you know, make the operation operate a lot faster. Okay, now for the lead out, click over here. Same thing for the lead in. Click on, you know, to copy everything from the lead in to the lead out. Once you have that done, come over here under save and calculate and then simulate. Now let's go ahead and slow this down, but make sure you're under solid, uh, solid verify. Slow this down and then click on play. And you're going to see your tool come down and machine your entire part. So it's going to come down 100,000 at a time. And this is your last finished path. And there you go. Looks good. And this concludes your session. I'm going to click on X and click on exit. And there you go. So far for the second setup, we have done the facing and we've done the pocket milling. Okay. So that concludes the, our session for creating the pocket operation for exercise number two.